I've got an auto light tractor distributor and I would like to show how we would actually design an ignition kit so um, this was given to me by someone I don't know if it worked when it was taken out but we're gonna go ahead and uh, disassemble it I'll show you step by step how we do it and in the end hopefully when it's done it will look like some of the other ones where this one is a, a Delco distributor um, this one is a Mallory distributor which is a replacement for a Holly like an Oliver six cylinder would have and this is our farm all uh, kit so um, again the, the, what we're trying to accomplish is to be able to fit a spacer inside of here replace all the moving parts all of all of this stuff here which uh, is not very accurate and uh, our goal is uh, to take all that stuff out and put in a very simple electronic module that can do all the thinking like a modern car or truck does it uses rpm based timing everything is self-contained in here unlike a, you know let's say a protronics trigger with an msd control box uh, this module will go inside the distributor your stock cap will go over the top of it you will not need any more parts other than this and um, this uses a timing disc which can record engine rotation get it behind here there are 90 slots in this disc it's a stainless steel disc 90 times per rotation this computer knows exactly what the engine is doing how fast is accelerating or slowing down what rpm it is so it knows exactly what the timing should be it never changes based on temperature it never changes based on humidity it never changes due to uh, magnetic interference from your timing parts spinning around in there uh, this is absolutely nuts on perfect all the time and uh, i love the way it works and so all of our ignition kits at c5 performance use nothing but american manufactured uh, power arc electronics and then of course we manufacture everything else here in Wisconsin. So let's go ahead and start taking this apart. Move those, we'll attempt to take this plate out and we're gonna wanna take uh, this, <clears throat> this is the, uh, the cam uh, lobe shaft that opens and closes the points. We'll wanna take that out also. Okay, I've, uh, I've got this rotated so that the cutout part uh, is right here where this post is. Again, I assume that that's how this would be removed. It appears that is true. So just take this plate and carefully remove it. You don't need to remove the points and all the parts on here. You can just leave it together. Now you can access the timing pieces and these would be the, uh, the weights and springs uh, that actually made the timing advance work. So as you're, uh, as you're rotating this around, I said you can see the weights and springs and stuff that would provide a very crude timing advance on this thing. So. Um, unlike most of them, this one actually has the springs in place. A lot of them, especially on the old farm tractors, a lot of these springs are actually broken or gone. Uh, and sometimes even the pins are missing to hold the weights in place. Uh, this one's um, crusty, but appears to be complete. So on this one, again, just poking around with a flashlight. Uh, this one, I'll have to go in with a very fine needle nose pliers or a pick. I'll take that retaining clip off. Uh, I did discover that this timing uh, mechanism is actually seized on so these um, weights and springs are not functional right now this tractor would have had absolutely no advance or retard feature on it um, quite possibly one of the reasons why it was removed from the tractor but i'll go ahead and take the clip out remove all these parts and then i'll show you what it looks like when it's completely empty all the uh the internal weights out and here's what they look like out of the tractor here's a spring this one's a little bit mangled <clears throat> just for me getting it out, but anyway, like I said, these these weights a lot of times are seized. Uh, these are corroded. These were not seized. This top piece was actually seized. So, as the um, as the weights move outward as the RPM increases, this piece is supposed to rotate back and forth, changing the timing point and providing some kind of a uh, you know a, a crude timing map uh, of of sorts, but. Like I said, a lot of times these things are uh, either the lobes are worn, uh, uh, which generally is not a problem. These get seized in place. The pins uh, in here that hold the timing weights in place. Uh, these on this auto light are really robust. Uh, <clears throat> some of them are, are uh, really wimpy. I've installed our adapter piece, and on the auto light, by pure coincidence, it happens to be the same diameter as the Mallory. 
but we've made this adapter piece. You want to find, you know, locate the outlet hole where the wiring is going to come through, and you want to make sure that that is on the edge of this dished out area. That allows plenty of room for the programming cable to access. So that you just want to gently get started. You would probably, it's easiest, if you run your wires through the hole first before you put this uh, disc in place, but for, for this video I'm not going to do that. Uh, our programming port is right here. That's where you can download new timing maps. So we've made that recessed area so that our programming cable can easily connect. All right, we've got our adapters in place on this particular one. It ended up being where I just laid a straight edge across there and I made the adapter uh, completely flush at the top of the, um, at, at top of the distributor body. And then I just uh, took my module, I set it on top. I, I sort of marked and adjusted the height so that when our encoder disc gets placed on here, the screws that we provide have a chamfer underneath the head, so that will automatically center this encoder disc in place. Um, when you accelerate or let off the throttle on any engine with a distributor, You want to make it so that the encoder disc never gets close enough to contact either the body or the dual optic reader. And if it's easier for you once to get adjusted, we generally provide um, a shim washer. The washer would go underneath this reader. Don't ever put the washer on top of this reader, uh, otherwise the screw head will not center the encoder. A little bit of wobble is perfectly acceptable. It is not uncommon for these shafts to be bent. Uh, the adapter puck that slides over here is not a perfect friction fit because I have found a little bit of variation from a tractor to tractor or from a, let's say a Delco car to a Delco tractor so we've allowed a little bit of play uh, again a little bit of wobble is okay that's why these are slots and not holes so um, now if we double check we have it installed we've got room for our wires to exit there without having inter interference there and when this is screwed in place there's two screw holes there then we can go ahead and plug in our programmer cable and there's plenty of access to do that now when you're actually running this machine if you have the distributor cap in place and I don't have I don't have the cap someone was kind enough to uh, give me this thing if the cap was in place all you'd have to do is just pop the cap off plug in your programmer, make your programming changes, and put the cap back in place with the screws, and you'd be all set to go.